Yeah. Well, Tom, so, we're should ready. We get started here. Let's get started. Okay, let's do it. Welcome everyone to the Microsoft 365 Productivity Tips October Ousting. It has you're make, been. You're, you're making up words now, my friend. Oh, I know it. Uh, so it's been since June, or did we? No, yeah, June, not July. Something so like that. Yeah. We took, we took vacation. What can we say, Tom and I? We needed some time apart to know <laughs> to let the the love grow stronger, and we're back. Yeah, and that'll be ruined here in about forty five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's just jump into it because I know that uh, and what's what's. Difficult about taking a three month break, Tom, is like it's I'm I have three backups because I have absolutely no idea. There's so much that's happened in the last three months. I have no idea what you're going to present, and there may be overlaps here. So hopefully not. But well, uh, it's 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 interesting because I will admit I was starting to run low on content that I had stored up, <clears throat> and we've done some different things internally. And so I put out a lot of new content lately and I decided, you know, oh, I'm going to, I'm just going to put one backup tip in case we duplicate. And I thought, no, I'm going to go through and actually put all my content into a single slide deck. Yeah. What I send you will be the ones that we used yep. and I'll have my slide deck ready for next month. Exactly. Uh, no, I've got <laughs> much the same. So it's uh, so I've got the multiple backups just in case, but uh, just to kick things off some introductions for those. I know it's been a while. Uh, my name is Christian Buckley. I run a company here in Lehigh, Utah called Collab Talk. Um, I am a nine-time uh, Office Apps and Services MVP, started in SharePoint World. Also a Microsoft off. Regional Director, which nobody knows what that is. That's all right. <laughs> so you can find my blog at buckleyplanet.com. And that's me and Tomas. And this is me. I need to change that picture. I've got a different picture I'm using now. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not an MVP and I don't have a manager title. I'm just a regular developer type person and I work at Cambia Health and that's a um, health insurance firm in the Pacific Northwest, even though I am based out of uh, Minneapolis. And I run a blog called One Minute Office Magic, which is where you will find these and many other tips. Yes, and excellent. And we do this, as we said, we've been doing this for almost four years and off Something and on. Like that. We take a couple of breaks, like the last three months. We just have a lot <laughs> going on. Well, with, with the, with, and the reason for that, folks, too, is just because with vacations and, and everything else, and you think, hey, we're all working from home, you think we'd have time. No, there's been so many online meetings and events that have oh, just yeah. made scheduling difficult. Every time I look online, you're in some other, you know, meeting sequence or a, yeah, there's a, just a know, Twitter tweet on. chat or yeah, yeah, just it's, I'm like, wow, you're a busy man. Lots going on. But the leaderboard, Tom, is dominating the boards currently. Bum, bum, bum. So we are keeping track. And uh, for those that are interested, I mean, we do have uh, every one of these, of course, all the recordings are out on YouTube. You can go find those. Uh, just a YouTube slash C, the letter C slash collab talk. And you can find all of them out there. Um, search on Tom's or my name on YouTube. You'll find all of them. But all of them are out there. They're also um, out on uh, my blog at Buckley Planet. Every one of them cataloged. And the one nice thing that we do is that because we're going to cover 10 tips uh, is I provide a link list um, on the blog post. So you can jump right to the specific tip that you're interested in and, and something that I've talked to Tom about for years. <laughs> One of these days <laughs> we'll do it. Creating <laughs> that database, that searchable database <laughs> in the blog. And yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it'll happen one day, but we're going to give everybody a chance to vote on each of these, but let's go through the rules of engagement since it's been a while. Um, so we're going to take turns. So we're going to share top tips, but we're going to go back and forth. We don't know what the other person's going to present, but there are no duplicates. Meaning if my number one is Tom's number one, he can't present the same thing. He has to shuffle it up and have some backups and present something different. And that's happened a couple times. One for each of us, I think. The red challenge yeah. flag was thrown and we had to put. <laughs> exactly. So we're gonna do a quick poll at the end of each round. So it's it, what's interesting about this is that it could be like, Tom shares an Outlook tip, and then I share a OneNote tip, and it's an apples versus oranges, but you need to vote on which one you think 
will personally help you that you think is the better tip that you're more excited about. So, Or which individual you might want to suck up to in case they may need to do something for you in the future. I'd like to say empty threats, but I know I think he's serious. That's how that's <laughs> the kind of person Tom is. I think he, that's that, if you vote against him, how vindictive he is. Ethics, schmethics, who cares? And, and so, I don't know, just take that into consideration when you're voting. <laughs> Uh, uh, and then there's the no hitting below the belt, which we've, uh, you know, one of these days I'm going to, I'm going to come in at like six, four, and that's not even going to be relevant that's anymore. Right. But, yeah. All right. Winner based on overall voting. And then we move forward and that's it. So, all right, we're going to get started. So I'll kick things off with the first round. Ding, ding, ding. And there's round one. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. This is one of my favorite tips. Been using it a lot. It's a small one, but a powerful one transcribing your videos in word for the web this is a cool feature this it, i absolutely <laughs> love this i'll just be clear that this the caveat is it's only word online it's not for the desktop app because it relies on the cloud and there's a lot of processing that involved so what you do is you go up into and i think i've got my uh you know i think people understand what this is if you are like me i'm doing more and more in video i'm doing interviews with clients uh, with team meetings, with user group meetings, I'm capturing those recordings. And of course, if you're saving that up, if you're recording your Teams meeting, for example, it's capturing and creating that transcription and it's in stream. But if you've ever uploaded into stream or over into YouTube, for example, and then gone and try to pull the transcript down and make that usable, it's almost <laughs> le less worthwhile to do than just to listen and type it yourself. It is, I mean, all the formatting that you still have to do in the cleanup, it's, it's awful. And so I've always wondered, like, why can't Microsoft do something where I can take a pre-recorded, because the, the, one of the limitations of some of the other transcription software solutions, third-party tools that are out there, is that you, you weren't able to, until more recently, even upload existing interviews or files that could only take live audio kind of in real time and do the transcription. Well, now you can go over into Word and I've touted this in the past that you can use the transcribe and do hands-free. I use it when I'm driving and I'm taking notes in Outlook or elsewhere. Um, but it's what's great is uh, you can go into that uh, dictate. In fact, I've got the screenshot here. I don't have one in there. I'll come back to why I don't have an example to show you here. One, because I've got customer interviews. I can't show you <laughs> some of that detail. But you go up to dictate and you've got the transcribe, um, but you, it allows you to upload uh, that your file. So you actually upload an audio or video recording um, there in the, that top right, and it will then process. Now, just to give you an idea, an, an hour long interview, it took close to two hours. So it's the upload process and then it goes through and does the actual transcription. But what's great about the end result uh, is that it, it identifies all of the separate speakers. And so what you do over in the right panel is you can go in and say, well, speaker one, that's Tom. And so you replace it in one place and it'll replicate it through the entire transcript. Speaker two is Christian, replicate it through the entire transcript. Then you can search through the transcript uh, and listen to each of the little audio clips to clean up the wording if, you, if you're using acronyms, for example. But you can then add quotes from that transcript over into your Word doc or in one button, move the entire transcript over into Word, which is what I'm doing. So it is just a huge um, time saver uh, to, uh, to create those transcripts. Uh, and then you can do things like if you do an interview and want to do a blog post and also add the transcript to that, or just have a better formatted um, speakers defined Word doc version of your transcript uh, without having to go through and copy and paste a couple hundred times to pull from stream or YouTube. So it is just a fantastic little resource that I'm excited to use all the time. Yeah. A couple things on this one. One, if this had come out like two years ago, I would have laughed hysterically because I'm sure some of you had the 
pleasure of receiving transcribed voicemails oh, from yeah. Outlook. <laughs> and it was like, God, I hope they never fix this because this is just Highly an endless source of entertainment. Oh, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> I have I have transcriptions of voicemails saved from like, a, you know, Jeff Roski and I, for example, going back and forth. And it just butchered the language so much. Like, I don't know what we were talking about. It's nothing related to what the transcriptions was that are highly yeah. entertaining. I remember one of the funniest ones was a coworker had gotten a voicemail from her boss that was, when you have a sec, can you give me a buzz? It came out as, when you have sex, can you give me a buzz? I'm like, mm, yeah. gee, mm, not the way that was meant. Um, well, in now, work context, I don't know. Yeah, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> um, so it's a thing of... Now their AI is so much more powerful yeah. that you're actually getting stuff that is pretty much accurate out of the box, which is great. The other thing that I just mentioned as an observation is I can see this kind of thing really playing havoc for people who do transcription for a living. Because yeah, I, I don't know. So what I would say is if you've not played with a dictate, um, go in and just try that. See how accurate it is. However, you have to like learning a second language to get to master it with the punctuation. True. Editing. True. So there's still a lot that needs to be done there. And uh, so, you, so it's, it's not, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a panacea solution that just uh, solves all those problems, but it's fantastic. If you're trying to just to capture stream of consciousness, thought the dictate yeah, it's, is great. it's definitely going in the right direction. All right, Tom, you should be able to grab the sharing directly. I can, which is really kind of nice. Yeah, I like it was that. A, I set that up to work like that. So. Yay. Let's uh, see. Let me uh, buzz through here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Boy, you My first that. one. <laughs> I was not queued up to where I should have been. So be it. Uh, lately in SharePoint Online, there's been a new web part that came out, which is kind of cool. And it's called the Save for Later web part. You know, for me, I have this really bad habit of collecting information, but not necessarily using it. I got a great bookmark collection. Never go back and look at any of them, but I got a great bookmark collection. Well, now I can do the same kind of bad things in SharePoint Online when I'm looking at documents or pages and be able to easily put something on a page that enables me to have a quick reference for things that I've said, oh, I really need to get back to that because I can't do it right now. So for this save for later bookmark or save for later web part, I'm going to be in a page <clears throat> and I'm going to click on the little plus symbol and uh, call up the save for later web part. And when I get that, come on, there we go. When I do that, it puts the web part out there and there's a number of things that you can specify to make it more customized for what you might want to have. So, for instance, you click on the pencil, it brings up the editing pane over to the right where you can start to do some of those things. The first thing is on the site that you're on and you put this save for later web part, you can have it show all the items that you've saved for later or only the items from that particular site. Uh, so for instance, if you were on an internet site and maybe they wanted to make customized content, they could put this out there and say, hey, will show you anything that you've bookmarked. Or if you're in a team site, you only want people to see things that they've marked saved for later that actually reside in that site. You can make that differentiation, which is great. You can also select or differentiate between just showing documents that you have saved for later, or whether that also applies to pages and news posts. Again, if you're in a team site, Maybe you're just flagging documents that you need to get back to or that you reference on a regular uh, uh, regular basis. But if you're in an internet, perhaps you want to flag that news post to go back because it's got some links that you want to deal with. So again, you can make those differentiations in this web part for whatever works for you. <clears throat> you can also say how many you want to show at one time. Eight is the default which is great. That seems to work fine. But if you're using this really heavily, you may want to show more. And you're able to basically hide that web part if nobody or if you have not marked anything as saved for later. So it can be completely transparent if it's something that, if it's a feature that you don't use and you don't mark anything, 
or it can show up and give you everything that you need to look at. And furthermore, it also allows you to change the layout of how you see things. So here, I've got it actually in a list. So I would see the title, the title, the title, and it would just scroll down the page where before, let me go back. Well, you'll see it here in a second. Uh, the other layout is grid format where it gives you those nice little cards that show up on the page. It's gonna take more room, but it's a little bit more visually appealing if you don't wanna give up the reason or if you don't mind giving up the real estate that's involved. So for this example, I went out to a page on the site that I was on and I clicked the little save for later bookmark and all's good. And then in this save for later page where I added that, you'll see that it now shows me the item that I had marked as save for later. It's using the grid format. So again, it's a little bit more visually appealing, may give me a little bit more context here. But again, I see this as something that's really good for intranet type pages or for maybe division or department pages where you want to allow people to interact with the home page, not necessarily have a whole lot of stuff that's just for this group or that group or things like this. This gives the page the appearance that it's, you know, basically specific to you. And if you have a site that you just want to have your own page and you want to have a page that just shows your bookmarks so you can go back and see it and you're the only person who really cares about it, you know, make a page, call it the save for later page, put that bookmark in there and you got an easy way to get back to all your pages that you've marked to save for later. So I think it's a really good thing to have available to you. You're definitely not going to use it probably as much as you would Christian's transcription I, thing, <laughs> but it is a nice poll. feature. Uh, so I've just launched the poll on this. I'll let you go and vote, vote between the two. One thing I'll say that there's a bit of a theme, um, uh, is certainly in a lot of uh, Microsoft's announcements around that personalization, that personal view into information. And so you're going to see that uh, theme today, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what else Tom's going to show, but that is some indication, but certainly a lot of the features, um, because that's, uh, it's so great that Microsoft has figured this out and the technology has progressed, especially with the cloud to a place where so much of it, you can go in there and customize how you want to consume information, how you want to, you know, retrace your steps. Like I've shared in the past, like the, the timeline feature in windows and, right. Uh, you know, and uh, the the using your screen layout and and you know customizing your view of the world um, helps a lot with productivity and uh, you know so it's that's that's it's this is a cool feature so I love this kind of stuff that helps with navigation and personal productivity. You bet. All right, so all right, we've had that open. I'm gonna. Close the poll if you've uh, not had a chance to go vote on that really quick. Five, four, three, two, one, and end that. Ah, well, thank you. So I, I took it 59%. That's well-deserved. Uh, I would have voted for you. <laughs> well, Tom, round two, over to you. Okay. This is something that's really cool. I know Sandra's online right now. She actually pointed this out to me. I'm like, oh my God, the Windows 10 calculator. It's freaking awesome. Um, if you've been around computers for some time, you know that there's a calculator that's attached to Windows and it allows you to do regular stuff, and maybe scientific stuff and maybe hexadecimal stuff. Eh, yeah, fine. Okay, no big deal. Well, <clears throat> she pointed out to me that the Windows 10 calculator is not your father's grandfather or your grandfather's calculator anymore. It does a lot of cool stuff and including some real-time type calculations that normally I'm off trying to find a site to give me those comparisons and I can now do it all within the calculator. So does, does it have the digital abacus that I use that I'm, it's kind of my, my go-to. Uh, you <laughs> might want to submit that to user voice. Okay. Um, I'm okay. not, sh I'm not sure it's there yet. User voice calculator, check it out, see if it works. <laughs> uh, so if you click the windows icon, lower left corner of your screen, select the calculator option. It will probably come up this way the first time, which says standard. And you're like, yeah, fine. I've done that. Been there. I have to use that on my phone. No big deal. But there's the hamburger menu up at the upper left corner uh, for the options. Click that, because then you get some really cool stuff. You've got scientific and programmer. Yeah, no big deal. 
But then you get into date calculations and converters. That's where, in my estimation, this really shines because you're not out looking for sites to do currency conversions or, you know, how many tablespoons equal, you know, blah, blah, blah type thing. So for date calculations, you can pick a date, and pick another date, and it will tell you how much of a difference there is between those. So when I ran this, I was, it was back on August 6th to May 22nd, which is my wedding date. And I had nine months. We jokingly refer to it as we're a baby away from getting married. No, we're not having kids. <clears throat> but there's also 289 days. I've had <laughs> something out about that, though. You know, <laughs> <laughs> We have had situations where people are like, well, we need a feature that allows you to count how many days between this date and that date. Go out and use your calculator. I can't build it to look this nice. Currency. This one's really cool where you can say, okay, I've got $500. What's that going to convert into uh, Canadian money? And it also uses real-time rates, which is just awesome. Are you able to go um, and point to a calendar date for the rate? I'm not sure you can. I think it just takes the normal or takes the current rate. Right. Okay. But again, I use this when we went on our cruise earlier this year. It's like, okay, how many dollars are going to equal how many Egyptian pounds or how many Jordanian dollars and stuff like that? And again, it's real time. It's not like, oh, this is a number we plugged in like two months ago you're going to get the most current things. A uh, number of days to say, okay, if you have 500 days, how many minutes, years, weeks, hours, seconds, milliseconds. I don't know why, but you can do it. Um, <clears throat> so again, if you're into having to make those kind of comparisons or conversions or anything like that, and you're tired of trying to find a currency site or a cooking site or something like that, your Windows calculator can do it for you, and it's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, I had no idea it. that all those options were there. That's, that's Neither awesome. did I until Sandra pointed it out to me. I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be a tip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like Sherry says in the comments, you know, always searching for websites. Yeah, I've got I, – I'm doing the same thing, doing especially working across – time zones, I'm going out to those kinds of sites, but uh, with currency conversion, having that stuff right there, oh yeah, calculator right in my, my laptop when I'm traveling, like I had no idea. So yeah, that's awesome. neither did I. Good stuff. All right. So go ahead and take the screen over and run with it. All right. Round two. So uh, similar to your previous as the navigation. So my next tip is the new adding shortcuts to shared folders in OneDrive. This is pretty cool too. <laughs> yeah, this is, so, I, so I found myself, if you're like me, I mean, one of the things I do is I have my favorites set up in File Explorer. Uh, so I have everything set up as my, my go-to locations. Um, so that I can, you know, uh, you know, the things that I access, like I've got a, a folder for productivity tips. So all the presentations, all the images that I uh, add to my slides, you know, anything, all the recordings are all accessible to that folder. Similarly, I do my live stream every Monday, the, the office hours, and we ask questions from the answer questions of the community. And so I want to have all of those assets, my tweet jams, whatever, you know, cut, you know, uh, client contracts I've got in these folders. Well, the, the problem is I noticed this when I was uh, on the road. So visiting some family and I logged in just to check uh, email. I didn't have my laptop with me. And so it's great with the cloud being able to log in with my profile into office and finding, getting access to certain resources like email um, through somebody else's machine. And of course, logging back out of that device. Um, but now that you can actually go into the OneDrive client and do something similar where you can create these quick links to folders within Teams, to SharePoint, um, to uh, you know, cloud and other uh, you know, accessible resources if you're trying to access them you know, from your local machine and having things that are a blend of local hybrid and cloud-based resources all from one menu. And what's happening is OneDrive is becoming that, I mean, it is becoming a replacement of the file explorer and it's giving me a much more accessible centralized 
uh, way of accessing all of those different assets. So it's really simple to go in there and do. In this example, I just went in. Over on the left, you see uh, all of the libraries that are accessible through my Office 365 groups. They're through Teams. I found that library that I wanted to access. And of course, you can have uh, you know, multiple levels of or, 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 or silos of information across SharePoint and Teams and, and OneDrive and create these quick shortcuts by selecting it. It was just simple as going up and adding the shortcut to my files. And then that my files, like in File Explorer, uh, where it's the favorites, it's creating those lists of favorites. And you can actually go and do much more with that, you can actually go in and take you know, actions and create automations based on those folders. So you can actually um, create um, Power Automate you know, activities and uh, you know, something that you know, a state change, kick off a workflow and access that, that information. So just a lot that you can do, but this is again, one of those things where it's allowing you to go in there and further personalize that uh, OneDrive experience to make your content more easily, uh, uh, you know, to surface your content more easily. Because that's like the worst thing is when you're going into like, I just had this open, where was this? And having to dig for things. Or if it's like me, I'm, I'm working on, over the course of a day, 20 different things in 20 different locations. And if I go to save a file, it, 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 tries to be so helpful and removes me from where I've been working, where I opened a file and defaults me to save in some place where I never saved anything. And where was that location again? Well, it's really easy for me to go find those frequently accessed areas in that, uh, um, you know, the, the my file section and save my content back to that location. Yeah, this is, this is cool that they've made it to where OneDrive can become more of a, I can live here because I have links to everything I need to get to. That should be the marketing campaign right, right there. OneDrive, I can live here. <laughs> I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> All right, so the poll is open. Please go in there and vote. So Tom's calculator tip, like I did not know it could do that uh, versus the new shortcuts creation in OneDrive. Which do you think you'll use more? Calculator. Calculator. All right. And Tom, congrats. You got 81% of that one. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Let's jump over to... Three tips, 30 minutes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Round three. <laughs> I, I muted myself there for a second. I have been okay, waiting that one's good. for this feature for so long. <laughs> Who has not been waiting for this feature? Like this, this is great. Uh it's the uh, ability to go in and mute all and make it the default setting to mute people as they come in. Now, there's some, what this means and what this doesn't mean. But uh, it's like to nip that chatter in the bud. <laughs> so if you have a meeting that you are the admin for, the owner of, and have more than five people, what you can do is through the more options, the ellipses there, select the meeting options. And you see down at the bottom there on the right, allow attendees to unmute deselect that. So that makes it so that when people log into your meeting, they're by default muted. Um, yes, they can unmute themselves, but most people, the problem comes from them not muting themselves in the first place. And so if you begin with everybody silent, that golden silence, uh, then you can usually, uh, you know, people are good about, okay, I need to unmute to come in to say something and then remute myself. And of course, you can always go in and silence people by going into the show participants button. So the little people icon up the top um, middle, right under meeting in general, show the participants. And then there's a, um, the mute all, or there's the, you know, the uh, icon on the next to the, each of their names and mute those individuals. 
of course, if you've, if you have a video going and you can generally see where, uh, uh, people are, it highlights people that are making the noise where the background noise is coming in. There's a great video that's out there. And I thought about if we had only had more time for this, a great <laughs> video about, uh, it's a zoom meeting. I think the kid was doing it as a joke, but it's a classroom with like 50 kids in the class, the teachers talking, it's a math class and the kid asks a question and then he doesn't mute himself and he starts screaming at his mother who you hear in the background. I'm going to do my laundry. Yes. I'm going to do my whites. Like, give me a break. I'm trying to ask a question. It's so rude. I'm, interrupting my class. Oh, I'm so sorry. He says, go back to, yeah, you were saying about this. And the teacher starts talking again. He starts screaming at his mother again. I'm pretty sure that he was doing that intentionally to, as a joke, but it was just uh, you know, fantastic there. Um, We've all been there. But I'm just saying that to the teams, uh, so when you mute the people, it does prompt the individual, let them know that they are muted. Um, but at least it's a, uh, you know, they have, they can unmute, but you have an option to control the sound. It's great. Very Tom, nice. over to you. Okay. I will mute myself, drop the mic, mute myself. <laughs> okay, and so let's go here. So this one is something that's been out there for a few months now, but it's really useful if you spend a lot of time in Teams when you're actually in a chat or a channel and you're trying to find a phrase or find a word, much like when you're in Word and you use Control F to get the find thing and you type in your word, hit enter, and boom, it pops up. Well, now you can do the same type of contextual search in a Teams channel or a conversation. So in this particular example that we have here, uh, I'm in a chat with Sandra because we talk numerous times a day. And I remember that she mentioned something about user voice, but I can't find, nor do I want to scroll through all the stuff to try to find where that was mentioned. So what I do is I hit Control F and up in the menu bar here at the top, it changes it to slash find, puts her name in there, which means I'm in a chat with her. I type in user voice and hit enter. And what that does in the left side results pane is it actually finds all the chats where the word user voice came up. And once I have that entry there, I can say, let's see, which one was the one I was really looking Oh, I, I think it's this first one here. If I click on that one, it then actually goes to the chat and does kind of a yellow highlighting of that particular chat entry. Again, makes it really fast for you to get to where you need to get to to get the information that you thought you remembered somewhere without having to spend a lot of time scrolling. This may not be too bad if you're in a chat, but if you're in a channel that's got a ton of activity every day, and you remember sometime last week, somebody mentioned a phrase or a term that you need to go back and see what they said about it, this can save you just a ton of time to get back to where you need to be, save you from having to scroll through everything, and potentially miss what you were scrolling through trying to find in the first place. So I recommend that if you're a Teams user, Definitely get used to this, you know, control F to do contextual text searching within a chat or a channel. Yeah, because the way that it works now, I mean, you can go up, of course, to the search bar, search on user voice, and in the results on the left, you can select like, you know, so it'll bring back all the results of where that showed up. You can click on the people and click on Sandra's profile to find, to, to kind of mm -hmm. refine those results. Um, but if you, I mean, but as you said, you're having to dig through kind of all of those different things and it could be, um, you know, this, this is just a way that if you know that it was a conversation with somebody and through a chat to go to a specific location, it's just a, you're, you're putting the refiner in place before the search rather exactly. than the other way around. Exactly. I, Microsoft does that a lot of multiple ways to, uh, to, to do the same thing, you know, so. All right, launching the poll. Uh, so this is putting shortcuts in OneDrive versus- well, muting, muting people. Oh, muting people, that's right. Muting people versus being able to use contextual search in your chat or channels in Teams. Yes. 
Do, uh, do the music again. It's like we were just here. We went pretty quick on that one. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll take another five seconds to to vote. So please go vote there. Four, three, two, one. All right. Ending the poll. Tom, you got that fifty nine percent. Hey, cool. Well, let's see if I can repeat that in round four, and then I can relax on round five. All right. <laughs> Okay, Outlook on the web has type ahead suggestions. I'm I'm finding I'm really liking this one of late cuz I've switched over to using Outlook on the web for nearly everything that I do. And so this has popped up literally and I find that I'm getting used to certain phrases that I can just tab over and get an email built without having to type in half the words. So if you've used Gmail, you're probably used to seeing this where Gmail would sit here and try to complete sentences for you based on what you've done before. Now Outlook on the web is doing the same kind of thing. So in this particular example, again, using an email I'm sending to Sandra, um, I started typing and I got to the word tell. Can you tell? And it figured, well, based on prior things you've done, you probably want to have the word me following this. And at that point, all I had to do was click the tab key and it went and basically accepted the me in there, had a space after the word, and I was ready to type again. In this case, I kept typing and I typed in what is go, and it figured I really wanted to say what is going on. So it completed that phrase. And again, all I had to do was hit the tab and it would go ahead and accept it and I can keep typing. Again, this is a really quick tip. Um, and some of you, maybe you're not used to looking at the screen when you're typing an email or something. I generally do. And so when I see that pop up, now that I'm used to it and I'm expecting it, I'm finding that I get much longer phrases where I will start to type. Uh, I can't even think of a good example right now, but maybe it's like, uh, can we meet? And then it may say on Thursday, da, 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 for that a site, blah, 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 blah. And it fills in the next words, which are similar to emails I've sent in the past. So again, the AI being able to give you an experience that is much more geared to you and how you use it. Um, Microsoft is really going there and it's really nice. Saves a lot of time and effort, even though, you know, typing three more letters, four more letters, a couple more words, isn't that big of a deal. But once you know that you can just hit a tab key and it takes place automatically, all of a sudden you kind of get to where having to type it in is a nuisance now and you really want so, to be able to tab through these uh, things. Tom, I don't believe I'm overstating this when I say that you, Tom, are destroying civilization. Thank you. Um, we don't remember anyone's phone number. Yep. No one can remember how to spell. And now we're encouraging people to not even finish their sentences. I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't know about that. Sorry, Christian. <laughs> uh, that's I, it's the it's it's what AI is doing. It's not you, Tom. It's AI. Unless Tom, <laughs> you are an AI. Is this really Tom? We we don't know. That's how, how automated been, we have now. How long has it been since you've seen me in person? <laughs> I know. I I've not seen you in the same room as the robot I created, the cyborg, months ago. So this is true. Uh, yeah, that's that's too funny. <laughs> okay, so you're number four. Let's see what I'm going up against yeah. here. <laughs> All right, uh, number four. So this is again one of those things which I was very excited to see the announcements around uh, the recurrent surveys within Teams. So of course we've had the ability to go in and use the Microsoft Forms. There's been a number of announcements around Microsoft Forms you know, over the, 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 the past year. Uh, and so they're adding more and more to that. There's still some gaps in between, you know, forms that are created uh, as part of like email campaigns and, and elsewhere. But what you're seeing, what's common across these is that you can go and create a form, a Microsoft form, whether it's within the forms.microsoft.com, whether it's embedded within a PowerPoint or a stream video, or now within Teams, is that you can then go and have these surveys out in multiple locations. And from one centralized location, if you're the admin that's creating all of them, you can see all the stats, 
capture all those results from one location, which is really powerful. But one thing that we've been lacking and they finally released was this ability to go and create a recurring team or, 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 or form within teams. So in this example, uh, you know, like if you want to do, um, which is a great thing to do within an organization is kind of the health and well-being, like how are people doing? And so I, we want to just kind of on a regular basis, do these little pulse surveys. And so what they've done is they've created these nice little templates um, so that you can have these things going out on a monthly basis. So to create a recurring survey, so you need to have the forms app enabled within your team or within that, make it available to users. And you can add it. If it's not team wide, it can be within a specific chat that you add it to, but your admin has to enable that, but you add the forms app to the team or chat, you name it. And down at the bottom there, it says, create a, a recurring survey. You click next on that. And it has these templates. So the employee well-being, the, the student well-being, and then the daily health check-in. And of course, you have the ability with any of this stuff, like they're not talking about it now, but being able to go in and create your own templates. Of course, you can customize these and the questions being asked, but they give you that starter template. I'm sure we'll have more templates coming and organizations will be able to go and create something similar. Um, but select the template, um, review and edit the questions. And you can see it's just that standard Microsoft Forms uh, uh, format there set the recurrence level for those, uh, and then uh, select how you review the results and click save, and that's it. And so if you are a manager and you have a team with your five direct reports, you can have this in your own, you know, the, the, the private channel or the, the channel that's set up just for your directs and have this go out on a weekly or monthly basis and do kind of that check, health check-in. How are people doing working from home? What's What's the activity? What's what's going on? Um, how's how's performance? And just have another form of information that you can capture um, to uh, just and, and without having to go and create these forms one by one or send out that same link and update the information and the questions asked. So, just a great resource to have. That's it. Short and sweet. Nice. I had not heard of this one. This is a brand new one to me. So. It is. It's. It's. Uh, I think this was a September announcement. I think uh, <clears throat> new one that's I out think... there. So I, I've gone out and, as you can see, I grabbed the screenshots and, uh, you know, I considered sending one out to my team, but seeing how it's me, me. myself, and I, <laughs> I just the I, I I opted to not send it. Um, but uh, you know, I've got that when... option in the future. Yeah, one thing that I find helpful is now that I'm doing the weekly webcasts with uh, the Planet Technology team talking about the things that are coming up in the roadmap, I usually have a clue as to what's coming up. That one completely escaped me. Yeah. All right. A uh, couple more seconds for a vote. So get your votes in. Four, three, two, two. one. We're actually making really good time here, by the way. So we have. Yeah, we are. We have 14 minutes left with the, the last one. So that's great. I'll end the poll and oh, and we've got a tie. So it's, well, not in the question overall. So I won the round. Oh, two, two. Okay. Yes. So, all right, <laughs> There's no gonna, ties in baseball. <laughs> we have round five for the tiebreaker for overall. Okay. For the event. All right, let's jump right into the final two tips here. The final countdown. Tom, please, if I could mute you. Right now. Oh. Uh, so here is again, so I am a big fanboy for all things tasks. Microsoft has some very, uh, thank you, Debbie. She says her ears are once again bleeding. Agreed. Okay, that hurts. <laughs> um, so I'm a, I am a big fanboy for Microsoft's uh, Microsoft 365 task management. There's a lot that's happening. It's far from perfect. There are gaps in between them. I I field a lot of questions and some of my most popular blog posts are about the gaps that still exist with the project management capabilities between to-do, tasks, um, planner, uh, a, a project online, that kind of stuff. But we're not getting into that depth. Keep it simple here, folks. Uh, but the in Outlook, if you're still working in email a lot, we all live in email still to a large degree, but you have the ability now with uh, Outlook Online, it has the integration with To Do. 
So you have the ability to go in and look at your calendar view and the tasks over on the side, and you can literally then just drag and drop tasks that have been assigned to you into your calendar. So if you're using Planner, there's an integration between To-Do and Planner. So you can actually go into the To-Do app. And if you're not using Microsoft To-Do, even if your organization is not using it, it, it's my list app. I use it for grocery shopping. I have a shared list with my wife and my son. So anybody wants something the next time somebody goes to the store, it's all on the same list. Yes, I'm the only one that accesses that list. When I go shopping, my wife always forgets that she has access to that list, except when she's asking for something, it's on the list. But when I'm asking for something, she doesn't check. That's different. But that's a different (laughs) conversation. We'll come back to that another time. Um, But this is it. So you, but when you have all of those items in your to-do list, You can aggregate. So if you're a member of 10 different planner plans and have tasks assigned to you in each one of those, there is a my view in to-do of all of those tasks. Well, you can open up those to-do tasks within Outlook and then drag and drop time to work on those tasks over to this. And I know, Tom, yes, Wonderlist was nice, but it didn't have this. (laughs) No, it did not have this. So the, the next question people uh, you know, ask is like, well, can we do this with Outlook for the desktop? No, there's not the to-do integration, but there is the Outlook tasks integration. So you have, these are flagged emails or tasks that are created directly in Outlook. All of those tasks do show up in your to-do app on a separate list. So there's not a a federated view. Well, I guess there is in my tasks. You can see everything, whether you've created them or they're assigned to you in that one view. So you can create everything I need to do today or a my day view of all of those things that are coming from Outlook desktop or from to do from planner. But to my point here, the desktop application, I can go into my calendar with all of my Outlook tasks and in a similar fashion, drag and drop those tasks into my calendar so I can set aside time to complete those tasks. So that's what this is. So we're, we're getting closer to having a, an aggregated or federated view of all of these things uh, within those, those uh, tasks. You want to answer uh, the I, one question we had so, that just hit the chat? Yeah, I saw that. So uh, there's a view. So if you go up into, so I'm in the home view of my calendar. And so there's actually a, you know, you can go in there and, and change the view if you clicked on view. So where you're able to see all of your tasks or flagged emails on the side or, uh, you know, in this, this case on the bottom. So there is a, a default view that you can set to look at your, the tasks as well as the, uh, the calendar items. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I need to do a better job of <clears throat> my tasks, actually moving them into my calendar and blocking out time instead of having the meetings that I have out there and then hopefully eventually getting time somewhere yeah. to actually get those done. Most people, I mean, it comes in spurts. I, I mean, I wish I did it every time it, right in the moment, but the reality is that you know, towards the end of the day, I'm going back through and I'm kind of sorting through and shuffling, moving everything around. But, uh, you know, it, it, uh, yeah, we're, nobody's perfect. Yeah. There's an upcoming thing that was announced at the last Ignite uh, that we had virtually that I'm looking forward to. And that's that whole, the commuter concept to where you have the ability, it gives you a way to kind of shut down your day to review what's going on, to kind of take a look at what's coming up the next day and physically say, okay, I'm making that transition from work to home, even though in today's environment, that may be just, I got away from my kitchen table and went into the kitchen itself. Um, But it's that same kind of thing, being able to coherently look at what I've got coming up and plan for it instead of just reacting to what's showing up. So I often incoherently look at my tasks that are ahead of me in that day, but. Oh, uh, I've made a career of that. I mean, not a problem. (laughs) Okay. So my final tip for round five here, this actually came up from a request that we had during a meeting where somebody was saying that the GIF or GIF, whatever happens to float your boat for pronunciation. Okay. GIF. 
I'll go ahead and go along with you here, my friend. The GIF animations that you can use in Microsoft Teams, they found it really annoying when people would use them. And all of a sudden you've got motion on the screen and you have no way to get beyond that if that's something that bothers you. And if people are doing GIFs like left and right, pretty soon it's like, eh, let me out of this chat. So I thought he basically had asked, was there a way to shut this off? And I'm like, I don't think so. But then I went and looked and hey, Edie, my coworker, found a way to do exactly that. So what you can do is if you're in your Teams client, go into settings, which is your picture up in the upper right corner. And then in general, if you scroll all the way down to display, they've got to rest uh, you've got turn off animations and it does require restarting teams. But what this basically does is for your GIF animations that show up, they will display on the screen, but you don't get the animation attached to them unless you actually want to see it. So basically in this particular example here, it's kind of hard to do the example in real life, but where normally this would have shown up and it would have started cycling through like three or four times the animation associated with it. Now it just pops up with there. If I wanted to start the animation, I could click on the start symbol and I would see it and I would laugh and I would go on to the next one because that's just how I handle these. But for people who don't want that distraction and don't want all the movement on their screen, if it's not applicable to what they're doing, this is a really good way to start to reduce the distractions that you personally may not like to deal with. So is, uh, is that something you can set up as an admin when you're deploying a new uh, a new employee uh, system by default to have that turned off? Do you know? Not sure. When we were looking for it, I didn't see it being anything like a group policy or something, hmm. uh, but it wouldn't okay. surprise I'll, me. I'll have to look to see if that is. It, it, I, would, I would be surprised if it wasn't uh, you know, a, a group policy, but... Uh, yeah, because I could see this being a usability issue, especially if yeah. people... Uh, accessibility issue for yeah. people who may get distracted, people who may be somewhere on the you know, autism spectrum right and uh, not, not know how to go in and, and turn this all off the yeah. other side i was thinking tom is that there's also an opportunity to like if you use an animated gif that you have to put money in like the swear jar it could be the animated gift <laughs> i like it and, i and would be just, rich at the end of some of my it, meetings <laughs> it's just a way for you to course correct those within your organization who who spend a little too much time selecting animated gifs i'm just saying I, I will admit when I was when it was announced in our team channel today that I had on call for the next two weeks, I may have responded with three animated gifts that were basically along <laughs> oh, the same Tom. line theme. Of, no, no, Tom, no. A, <laughs> Tom, were you a big MySpace user? <laughs> no, I was not actually. But it was funny because somebody came back with one that was I think that meant yes. And I came back, of course, with a, that's fake news. I'm like, that's the only time that we use that term that actually applied there. <laughs> it's like every website in 1994. You know, Pretty much. Had those things. So that's what I think about every time I, I see the, those. But uh, well, the, the poll is up and running. So please go there and vote. And uh, while that's going, I'm going to uh, pull back the sharing and uh, let me grab that and to round things out here. Um, so five more seconds on the poll. So please go vote four, three. Whenever you do this countdown, I keep thinking it's like my dance class where it's always five, six, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight. eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ending the poll. Yes. Christian. Lost. 67 and three to two for the round. So thank you, everybody. <sighs> Overall win. Uh, I, I, Tom, I don't think that changes the, the total stats. It I doesn't think matter. Still be, I think you're ahead there. but It's the emotional crushing that I just took. Oh, agree. agree. And I'm taking screenshots of who's on this call that works for with me. And yeah, yeah. Watch right. your you're... support <laughs> plummet, folks. I know. Well, let me just say it in the, the, the waning moments here. Uh, because since we, uh, we, Tom and I, we have thought long and hard about uh, the schedule for the rest of the year. And so we're, we're happy to share that uh, the next event is on the calendar, November 24th. Yes, it's the week of Thanksgiving. We realize that. 
Um, but uh, I would be very thankful if you voted for my tips that week. Yes. <laughs> but join us for the Nexus event. And, and, and we already have, I think we have close to, I think we've got about 75 people are already registered for November and then nice. December happening on the 29th. So at the end of the month. So again, if you're not taking the time off, even if you're on vacation, no one's going anywhere. You're just home watching TV. <laughs> Actually, I can't say that. I was going somewhere during the week that we originally yeah. scheduled this, so we had to redo it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I feel bad if people had vacation plans and are not able to go. I'm supposed to be in Hawaii in May, and Ooh. I'm still fingers crossed that I, I get to go there. But, uh, you know, for – but I'll just say to, just to wrap things up, you know, please definitely, if, if you uh, enjoy this format, go and subs- subscribe out on YouTube – Again, that's under the collab talk. Um, I don't spam people with a bunch of stuff that's out there. There's interviews and there's this the productivity t- tips and some other useful videos that I think you'll you'll like. And then of course our two blog posts where we'll uh, we largely blog about uh, most of these tips. Tom and I are both very productivity focused, <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of great content in both locations. But definitely. Tom is only, he's dedicated to the productivity stuff. So make sure that you're following his blog there. I found my niche. I found my voice. (laughs) I found my niche. Uh, I don't know where that's. Yeah, yeah. Now now you can sing. You can break their ears and it won't cost you anything. It did when I did it. (laughs) It's not 80s hair metal though, Tom. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thanks everybody. And Tom, thank you as always. And uh, we'll do it again next month. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Bye.